What's going on there, guys? Good afternoon, good evening, good morning to some out there. It's the Earthmaster here on this beautiful Thursday, September 29th, 2022. It is about 1.50 p.m. Central Time here along the Gulf Coast in Texas. Beautiful day out here in Texas, about 83 degrees, not super humid, and uh, absolutely beautiful weather right now. Uh, taking a look at the last 24 hours of earthquake activity here along the United States. Did have some activity way back here west of the Cascadia subduction zone earlier this morning. Uh, 3.2 off the coast of Washington, Canada area, back behind the Cascadia subduction zone. Notice that right there on the map. Uh, Cascadia sits right here. That's a major subduction zone off the west coast of the states. And uh, this one kicking off here. It looks like it's in the area of the uh, Cascadia Basin outside of the Springfield Seamount uh, within the Juan de Fuca Plate. So a little, little oddball activity out there. 3.2 at 13 kilometers. Always good to pay attention to what's going on off, off the uh, coastlines for sure. Up into Washington, looks like a little small microquake activity up there. Uh, Northern California today, nothing going on along the uh, coast range. Most of the activity down south. There's a little bit of movement up here in the Sierra Nevada mountains. Looks like a 1.4 near east shore of the Lake Almanor area. And also a 2.0 just outside of Truckee. Notice some movement here south of the bay. And also along the coastline here of the California region. Let's go ahead and check out some of this activity down south here. Uh, on the San Jacinto Fault Zone, it looks like, and uh, kind of off the Elsinore Fault Zone as well. Um, do I have the fault map here listed? Uh, I thought I did. Let me double check here. I'm on a different computer, of course, because the home base is at home, obviously. And um, just kind of uh, working with a new computer out here, which seems to do the job, right? As long as I'm getting updates out and it's allowing me to do what I want to do. There we go. Now we got the fault systems keyed up here in Southern California. The San Jacinto Fault Zone running up here uh, very close, intertwining with the San Andreas Fault here. This is the Elsinore Fault System, pretty lengthy one as well. Uh, both of those fault systems today showing quite a bit of microquake activity uh, on them. And also off the coast of San Diego, a couple of small quakes as well. Looks like that's kicking off of the... Uh, uh, which fault system is that? Uh, Conrado Bank Fault Zone. Uh, I know there's a couple of thrust faults out here that do sit uh, just offshore. A couple of quakes there today. Nothing major though, folks. I'm sure a beautiful day down there in Southern California as well. Not quite as beautiful though here uh, as here in Texas, I should say. Uh, let's see. Yellowstone National Park. Got a few earthquakes keying up here on the map. This is probably uh, day, I don't know, probably day 30 of at least some type of activity occurring there at Yellowstone National Park. Let's go ahead and key up the latest seismograph stations from the Yellowstone region. Make sure I got the right updates. Uh, yep, 29th. And uh, the swarm continues, mostly confined here to the northwest corner of the Yellowstone area. And note all these little earthquakes here. This is a distant earthquake. I believe that's from the, that is the uh, 6.5 earthquake that struck in the South Sandwich Islands last night, late, late last night time frame. And there's some uh, um, earthquake activity, localized earthquake activity there at Yellowstone. Notice the, uh, the very thin spikes, even these smaller blue ones here uh, is some earthquake activity. And the USGS doing a pretty decent job of reporting the majority of them. Looks like they got about 14 earthquakes or so on the map. Hurrah, hurrah, right? Uh, at least they're reporting them. That is a good thing. All right, let's see what else we got here. Uh, no major movement throughout the Yellowstone area, except for, as noted, the um, little swarm up there. Uh, this activity down here at Mary Lake looks to be, to me, that kind of looks like some earthquake activity, but I do want to check the weather up there real quick because a lot of times the, uh, let's bring up a different window here, the thunderstorms that key up throughout the Intermountain West and Montana and Wyoming, um, especially if there's some high wind uh, with those storms, can look similar to that signature that I just showed you there on the map. 
So I'm going to go over here to the Yellowstone area and see if I can't discredit the uh, seismograph signatures. Wind gust. Uh, looks a little windy up there today in Yellowstone. We've got some gusts around 30 miles per hour. Far as wind or far as rain goes, there we go. This just coming in. Looks like quite a few thunderstorms throughout the uh, northwest corner of the park uh, in all of Yellowstone, actually. So, uh, again, this just keyed up. It looks like within the, within the last hour or so. Uh, and so we can discredit this activity that we see here. Uh, it kind of looks like yellow, it kind of looks like earthquake activity, doesn't it? Uh, but it's mostly centered around. Uh, and, and depending on what these seismograph stations are keyed up as far as the amplitudes and the monitoring of them, um, some of these may not show that. But it uh, looks like around the center part of these maps here are what we are seeing uh, is thunderstorms, uh, lightning, you know, ground movement. It could be, or not ground movement, but uh, wind, high winds do create environmental noise outside interference on these seismograph stations. And that's exactly what we're seeing here uh, listed up on the map. So if I see this, and I think it might be earthquake activity, I'll double check just to see if we got any weather events going on there around Yellowstone. And that's exactly what we have right now. Uh, we've got some storms that looks like keying up within that area. All right, backing out of here. Uh, let's see what we got throughout the rest of the country. Um, Oklahoma, Texas, some movement outside of Pecos and down here along the Gulf Coast of Texas. Absolutely beautiful, but we are under a, uh, a, a some type of beach warning uh, due to the high winds and uh, the stirring of the, the Gulf out here from Hurricane Ian over the past couple days. We are under a uh, beach hazard statement, and they're talking about moderate to high risk of rip currents and longshore currents above normal wave run up this evening around high tide, uh, exactly where I'm at here around the uh, uh, Gulf Coast here of Texas. And it looks like uh, water levels could peak between three and 3.3 3 feet uh, over the next several high tide cycles along this area. So last night it was pretty crazy. Uh, it was almost over shore, uh, overflowing the, uh, the bank here. I got some dunes that kind of block off the higher tides, but uh, it was pretty crazy last night. Pretty high uh, uh, currents and uh, some rip tides out there and undertows. A lot of uh, a lot of activity being stirred up there in the Gulf from the Hurricane Ian that is now centered over uh, kind of offshore of the uh, eastern side of Florida. And uh, pretty crazy, pretty devastating um, hurricane there for the folks down there in Florida. All right, nothing going on for us. Earthquake activity around Florida or the East Coast for that matter. Um, some movement out around the um, Barbuda area again, 4.3 earlier this morning. We also had some activity last night. Um, looks like a 5.0 kicked off there in that region yesterday. Little activity around the Cocos Plate. Still getting quite a bit of swarming out here around the North Atlantic area into the, uh, the Rick Janes area, it looks like, where they had a 5.7 just a little bit ago as well. And uh, things are just very active out there. And it's all confined to this region. It is a divergent type boundary, meaning that it's a, a separation of the seafloor out there in the uh, ocean. So something big kind of brewing out there. Uh, it has seemed to kick up activity down south here along the South Atlantic Ocean and the Antarctica Plate, uh, where, we see, where we've seen that 6.5 come in to the South Sandwich Fracture Zone, not the trench area, but the fracture zone that sits just about 150 miles here to the east uh, between the plate boundaries here. 6.5, and it looks like a uh, 5.4 struck as well last night. Nothing showing up far as 4.0 and above, far as aftershock activity goes. So uh, movement throughout the Western Pacific, all pretty much um, centered around the wet, uh, eastern edge of the Philippine plate, around the Mariana Islands, also around Papua New Guinea. Um, Indonesia area 5.4 coming into that region as well. So no major quakes as of today. Uh, the only one was from last night, that uh, 6.5 down there in the South Sandwich fracture zone. Uh, let's see what else we got here in the region. Let's go ahead and check out space weather real quick. Let me refresh this and just do a real, real quick uh, recap. 
Looks like G2 Storm still expected around the October 1st time frame. G1 prior to that on the 30th. So look for those conditions at the higher latitudes. Even mid-latitudes have a chance of seeing uh, some geomagnetic unrest uh, up there known as the Aurora Borealis. So look up in the sky uh, if you're up there around the mid-latitudes and definitely high latitudes in the Canada. Got a pretty good shot of seeing some, uh, I'm sure, some spectacular sights in that area. Uh, as far as the sunspot activity goes, it looks like 3107 is down here in the red. Must have gained a little bit of complex magnetic field, which it looks like it is. A beta gamma class, a possibility of 55% chance of a C flare, M flare at 10, and 1% chance for an X flare uh, from that sunspot, which is 3107, and that is centered. Um, let's see here where we got this down here towards the southwestern portion of the, of the sun. Um, and that one will be facing away from Earth here in the coming days as it uh, rotates out of view. These other sunspots that are directly facing us really don't pose any significant threat just by looking at them. Um, so that's unfortunate in that aspect, but uh, we'll continue to monitor that. And of course, here comes that solar wind stream from the coronal hole. 27 and 28, uh, both kind of facing Earth uh, directly. And that will be providing the possible G2 storming conditions here uh, in the next coming night. So just a heads up. All right, guys, I'm going to bounce out of here and I'm going to go take a little swim out here in the Gulf. Uh, it is beautiful. Uh, it's sunny, obviously. Um, and there is some rough surf out there, rough uh, waves kicking up. But um, at least I can see. Last night it was pretty dark out here, so I really didn't want to go uh, for a swim. We just kind of put our feet in the water and had a little bit of fun, but uh, it's uh, a little bit dangerous at night, so I try to stick to the daytime uh, events. And uh, I'm just going to go out there and soak up some sun rays and uh, enjoy some soul healing processes. The ocean always has a way of, uh, you know, taking out the negativity, taking out the bad, and replacing that with positive vibes and positive thoughts for sure so all right so from uh, this end here along the gulf coast uh, this is the earth master and missy mimi's is here with me as well we are going to go have a little bit of enjoyment and we will chat you guys a little bit later tonight uh, with a complete update until then take care um, we'll catch you guys very soon peace out